I'm Katrina Korfmacher, and I'm the Deputy Director of our Community Outreach and Engagement Corps in our Environmental Health Sciences Center. And what we do is we take research that our scientists are um, doing and translate it to answer the community's questions. This time of year, people think about um, working in their homes and particularly exterior painting. There's not a long season in Rochester where we can paint the outsides of our houses, and this is it. So this is the time of year when a lot of people are getting work done on the outsides of their homes, and one of the things that they need to think about is that their homes may have lead-based paint on them. So the story of lead goes back thousands and thousands of years because it's a natural metal that um, people have been able to take out of the earth and use for a lot of practical purposes for a long time. It's one of the softest metals there is and it has a very low melting point. So even back in the time of the Romans, people were able to, to extract lead from rocks and use it for things. And as we went forward in time, we found lots of new uses for lead. And one of the um, most significant in the early part of the 1900s was using it for paint, particularly paint on houses. It made paint very strong, it helped colors be bright, and it was a wonderfully long-lasting, um, hard substance to protect houses with. So. Um, people used a lot of lead in paint, but they didn't think about the fact that that lead was going to be with us forever and that when lead gets into our bodies, it's a very powerful toxin. Lead is a um, heavy metal that when it's in the body, it affects almost every organ system. And because children's bodies and brains are developing quickly, lead harms them the most. That doesn't mean that lead isn't harmful for adults, but it tends to take more lead to be harmful to adults than it does for children. So for adults, we might see um, first emotional or uh, aggressive behaviors, um, and then loss of feeling in the tongue or the fingers, and leading to all kinds of complications. And at high enough levels, it can cause coma or even death. That we usually only see in occupational settings, where someone's being exposed to a lot of lead because of their work or their hobbies or their lifestyle children can be damaged by lead at much lower levels and that's why we focus so much on children's health when we're talking about lead. When lead gets into a child's body it is incorporated into their growing bones and it stays there forever. It affects how their brains are developing and that's a permanent impact. So the worst thing about lead is that you really can't treat it. Once it affects the growing body in that way, its effects are permanent. So we really focus on avoiding exposure and keeping kids from um, getting lead into their bodies. One of the things that we are asked most often about lead by parents is, how can I tell if my child's got lead? What are the symptoms? And the hardest thing to tell them is that there really aren't symptoms. Even at levels where um, lead can be causing harm, there may be no signs or symptoms in a child's behavior or their, their physical health. It isn't until later that symptoms such as aggressive behavior or difficult, difficulty learning show up. Well, the good news is that almost exactly a year ago, the EPA implemented a new rule called the Renovation, Remodeling, and Painting Rule. It's called RRP for short. And what it says is that anyone who is being paid to do work on a pre-1978 house who's disturbing more than 20 feet of uh, square feet of paint has to be trained in lead safe work practices and use those practices on the job. So if you are having someone do work on your house, you should make sure that they have what's called RRP certification. And while they're doing the work, make sure that they are working in a lead safe way. And basically that means not generating a lot of dust, making sure that any, any paint dust that gets into the air is um, collected and sealed off from the rest of the house and that a very thorough cleaning job is done after the work's completed. It's a really good idea to educate yourself about how to work safely around lead if you are going to undertake a project like that yourself. Um, the good news is that there are RRP classes um, being supported for free by the County Health Department under one of their grant programs. And it's a good idea for homeowners who might be taking, doing painting jobs themselves to take one of those classes. If that's just not possible, there's a lot of good information about how to work lead safe on the EPA's website. The University of Rochester has been recognized for decades for its cutting edge medical research on the effects of lead in the body. We also have really leading um, government agencies and community groups. So the city of Rochester passed the only local lead law in New York State outside of the city in 2005 and that provides a lot of resources particularly for people who live in the city of Rochester. Our Monroe County Health Department is very proactive in helping people who have questions about lead. Our community is very aware of these problems. We have a, um, an 
non-governmental group called the Coalition to Prevent Lead Poisoning that has lots of resources on their website and the ability to answer people's questions. So here in Rochester, we're cursed, but we're blessed. We have a lot of lead um, in our environment. We've had a lot of lead poisoning problems in the past, but we also have a lot of resources to help people address those problems.